Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. I'm Biola Labi. Welcome back. I'm Tundu Abiola. And our next guest, Professor uh, Awalu Yadudu, is a Nigerian academic, professor of law, and the current vice chancellor of the Federal University, Brinim Kebi, Kebi State, Nigeria. Professor Yadadu also served as the legal advisor to the late head of state, General Sunny Abacha, and is a former deputy chairman of the National Conference Standing Committee on Law, Judiciary and Human Rights. Professor Yadudu, welcome to this morning show. We are currently fixing his... Okay. Good morning, Professor. Can you hear us now? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, I can hear you well. Good morning, Professor. Uh, good morning to you. Yes. It's a pleasure having you on. As we gear up and head to 2019, the, elect the campaigns have started, and we're on the road to 2019. As someone mm -hmm. that has been part of our, I mean, part of our democracy, what do you think and what are you, what are you concerned with and what are you hopeful about as we go into a new election season in 2019? Well, um, I would hope that uh, we would have a very peaceful election, mm -hmm. uh, one that would be conducted according to the rules of the game, and uh, one that would also uh, command the respect of uh, uh, the electorate that will be better than the one we had in 2015. In 2015, we recorded a milestone in that a ruling party handed over to another party. How have we progressed since that milestone? Yeah. Um, so say, say, say it again. Um, we recorded a milestone in 2015 in the sense that the ruling party handed over yeah. to the opposing party seamlessly. How have we progressed since then? Have we yeah. had other achievements electorally? Well, well, uh, I, I think the, uh, I, although I'm not a spokesperson for, for INEC, I think they've done quite a few uh, runoff elections uh, since then. And although it's not on a national scale, they, it does seem that the, uh, the, the, the magic wand that is in the uh, uh, card reader seems to be working better than it did the other time. And that I think uh, it looks like even when we deploy it on the national uh, scene, uh, votes would count when they are cast. Mm. You didn't tell us about your concerns as we go into 2019. Do you have any concerns? Well, the, the, the usual concerns, of course, are that uh, one hopes that it will be peaceful and that there will not be any violence attendant to it. Um, the, uh, the other concerns, of course, is that uh, the ho one hopes that the, uh, the campaigns uh, would all, all be, because the, the, the peace that attends an election often is uh, preceded by the, uh, uh, the disquiet or maybe co co confusion that uh, 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 precedes it. And uh, if we have uh, uh, a campaign uh, uh, that is peaceful, that is uh, decent, uh, I, I think we should, we should also hope that the, the results, which, as I said, would, would, would be reflected and uh, uh, votes would count, there should not be uh, uh, too much of a problem. Of course, you would want also uh, the, the losers to, to be decent enough to accept and, and concede uh, uh, that they have lost and that uh, we will have something uh, to build on the 19, uh, 2015 exercise that we had. Okay. When you get take a look at this current administration and you look at how they've done, specifically the war on corruption, how do you how do you how do you believe this administration has done on that war on corruption? Because corruption was one of the main campaign points um, during the last election. How do you believe this government has done on that? I, I think uh, uh, they've not done badly. The uh, there have not been too many convictions. There have been trials. Uh, some of the uh, uh, cases that are ongoing, uh, uh, 
don't seem to make much progress. Uh, but I think the success in fighting corruption uh, ought not to be measured by the number of convictions that are, uh, are secured. I think the, if you have institutions in place that would, would check it, and uh, you have also institutions in the trial process which would also obviate the need for uh, uh, trial to take place in the first place, I, I, I think you will see more results, uh, positive results on the, uh, on the horizon. See um, more results. I, uh, I'm not uh, a politician, uh, so I would not uh, uh, get into the politics of whether the, the, the exercise has been selected, but I think the, the president uh, has been consistent and uh, insistent in seeing to it that those who are accused of uh, a wrongdoing are brought to justice. Are accused and whether of, uh, a in the end justice uh, prevails is another, it's out of his hand. Uh, it's within the court system. But as a professor of law, what do you think is behind the lack of convictions? Because while your point about creating institutions is correct as a deterrent, there needs to be punishment. That also creates an effective deterrent. Why don't we get the convictions that we need? Well, you see, uh, uh, we have an adversarial system of uh, criminal justice. Uh, the, uh, uh, an accused person is presumed innocent until proven guilty. Uh, he or she has... Uh, uh, available all the protection that the Constitution has given him and the, 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 the procedural rules have given him or her. And uh, if uh, the, the, the rules do not permit for a speedy if, way of disposing uh, of the, cases, the, the, you the just rule. can't do it uh, overnight. It's not uh, a matter, you cannot forsake <clears throat> justice at the altar of speed. Now, having said that, uh, I, I think we, we do also have uh, uh, our rules of procedure are rather arcane. Uh, they are not up to date. We need to do something to bring them up to speed uh, to deal with the, the, the situation we have at hand. So why we are not seeing convictions is not for lack of diligence in the, uh, 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 the, the prosecution, but uh, uh, Partly due to the rules, exist the rules which are not up to speed, and partly due to the fact that an accused person can avail himself or herself of any defense that uh, the procedures provide him uh, to delay uh, 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 the proceedings. And uh, although uh, there has been in place the new uh, Administration of Justice Act, which is applicable at the federal level in the FCT, which has somehow uh, made some difference in the manner and the speed with which uh, trials are conducted. Mm. Thank you, Professor. Um, Professor, you mentioned um, our laws and some. You hinted at some um, at, at reform around that and um, some of the 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 what the judiciary needs to do. Can you go more into as someone that sat on the National um, Confab Committee of uh, for the law? Can you can you expand on some of the reforms that actually needs to happen with judiciary? And also the second thing is, if we're not measuring success of the corruption. Um, fight by convictions, what should be the measurement? How should we measure it? Um, I, I think one uh, intangible way, but, but really also tangible way of measuring is that uh, uh, people are a bit more cautious. Mm. And there are things in place in the banking system, in the financial system, in the reporting system that actually now have, have served to, to stem the tides of things that would otherwise easily happen and that we are seeing uh, being revealed at the moment. Now, as to the, <clears throat> the issue of reforms, uh, the, 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 the Justice and Human Rights Committee of the, uh, the 2014 uh, National Conference that I chaired or I co-chaired, I wasn't the chairman, uh, has quite a number of recommendations uh, for 
speedy dispensation of justice uh, uh, and also uh, the, 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 the updating and modernization of the processes. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, that has not seen the, the light of the day. Military governments are not particularly popular in today's day and age, but having served on one, what would you say is yeah. a way to incorporate military tribunals in a democratic dispensation? Because they are quicker. Uh, well, I, I, I don't think, uh, if you mean by military tribunals, uh, you mean tribunals that would not uh, 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 comply with existing rules of procedure or constitutional stipulations. I, I don't think there is any place for them in, in a constitutional system. Um, but if you're looking for a speedy uh, uh, manner of disposing cases, uh, it, it's not only military tribunals that can do that. And I think you... You can look at the existing rules of procedure, uh, you can uh, tweak them around, and you can make incremental changes in the manner, uh, as has happened with the Administration of Justice Act uh, in the, at the federal level. Mm. Um, one of the things you just said before we shift gears a little bit, we just want to um, just want to wrap up on this um, issue of our speedy, yeah. um, speedy justice system and trial. Why do you believe that a lot of the recommendations from the CONFAB have not seen the light of day? Why is there lack of willingness? Uh, well, Pat, yeah, I think uh, I, I, I had a view about the conference before it took off. I think the timing was wrong. Mm. Uh, and also uh, the, 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 the way the membership was composed also was wrong. But uh, given uh, uh, that it did take place, uh, I, I think the, the convener, uh, the former president, also did not quite uh, mean uh, to implement what was recommended because uh, he did nothing to, uh, to, to seek to implement uh, what were recommended. Uh, there were hundreds of recommendations. Some of them belonged to his uh, purview. Some of them belonged to the National Assembly. Some of them were of the nature of uh, constitutional amendment. But uh, uh, because there was an, election, an impending national election in place, he did nothing. He only dumped the reports at the National Assembly in the twilight of his uh, 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 regime. And that, that, that has been it. But the report exists, and even if, even in spite of all the criticisms that you just, of the reasons why you've said maybe it wasn't in the spirit, but there seems to be quite a number of useful recommendations. There's no need for us to ch um, throw the child out with the bathwater. Are there still some things that you believe the National Assembly should still take up and look at and see how we can move forward with that? Oh, there are. There are quite a number of things that uh, if they are minded and if they are inclined, uh, 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 they can look at them. There are a number of constitutional amendments proposed mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, they, they can look at them. Now, the only thing, again, is time is important. Mm. Uh, the, I, I don't uh, envisage that at the moment the National Assembly can uh, start any constitutional amendment uh, or uh, uh, seek to um, uh, uh, bring new laws. Uh, the, the best time would be for anyone who wants to uh, do anything to restructure or to uh, bring about reform would be that you you use it as a platform and then uh, at the beginning of an administration an agenda is set out to seek to bring about the changes that are uh, some of them are time consuming for example the constitutional amendment is not something you can do overnight mm -hmm. uh, uh, legislations would also have to be processed so timing is important uh, I don't think anything of substance can be done uh, between now and the, the national election. Mm. As you said, it's a parliamentary exercise to amend the constitution. It's also a national exercise because you need to go to state houses of mm -hmm. assembly as well. So, but hypothetically, in, the, in yeah. the ideal world, what constitutional amendments would you have liked to see put in place before next year's elections? Uh, which, what amendment would I, would I have liked to see yes. take place yes. before the next uh, election? Yes. 
Uh, for example, the, 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 the amendment to, the, to simplify our uh, rules of procedure in the, uh, in, uh, that have been proposed, those could have uh, uh, happened before the election. Uh, the, the, the changes to the Constitution, even, however much you may wish to see them happen, uh, it, it can't happen between now and the, the election. But uh, I know that it was a very, very popular thing to, to seek to dispense with the, uh, the assent of the president in uh, bringing about constitutional amendment uh, because it has proven to be a thorny issue. Uh, I would have loved to see that uh, 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 happen now. Of course, it was something that uh, the... the <clears throat> was part of the fourth alteration to the Constitution uh, uh, in the dying days of uh, the former president, but of course it was not implemented, so that also has remained uh, uh, abandoned. Um, my hope would be that if you really mean to, to thoroughly uh, uh, change whatever aspect of the Constitution you find uh, disagreeable, uh, the best way would be to use, uh, set an agenda, start it, chart out uh, uh, a paced uh, uh, and, of course, uh, time for meeting, uh, a paced approach so that you can do it within the first two years of uh, uh, a government. Uh, mm. uh, but uh, from now to the election, I don't see anything happen, mm. not even a legislation being passed. Mm. I'm going to shift gears a little bit and ask you, if you take a look at the war on insurgency that was declared by, this, um, by the current government, how successful has it been in light of recent losses yeah. of Nigerian military? I'm afraid I, uh, I'm not uh, a specialist in that area, but uh, uh, one thing that I feel I can say is that uh, the kind of insurgency that you have which is described as a asymmetrical uh, kind of war is not one that is won overnight uh, or with the speed that uh, you might uh, uh, succeed if there is, uh, 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 it's, if it were a more conventional uh, uh, engagement. However, uh, the, the one thing that ought to be, uh, attention ought to be paid to is that uh, the, the non-military uh, way of dealing with the conflict as a way of uh, approaching the issue ought to be given a bit more priority so that, uh, because in the end, even if there is a decisive military success, you would have to manage uh, the peace or the, uh, the, 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 the war that you've uh, won. So, I, I would want to see, like I said, I, I'm not a military strategist or security expert, but uh, one would want to see some attention paid to this other area of uh, non-military approach to dealing with the issues. Sir, can you expand on what you mean by the non-military approach? Mm. Well, well there, is, there, is, there is engagement of the community. There is uh, reaching out to the, 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 the combatants on the other side. Uh, there is also retraining. There is also uh, a, a, a deliberate uh, uh, program of uh, dealing with what has led to uh, the insurgency, de-radicalization. There are a host of things that can be attempted, uh, 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 which are non-lethal uh, in, in the sense of... Uh, uh, co combating uh, the insurgency. Some of those things can, can, can help. Okay. You may be aware or you may have seen that distressing video mm. making the rounds with our soldiers in dire straits. Do you have any comments on that, sir? No, I, I don't uh, pay attention to some of those things. Uh, some of it uh, 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 often tends not to be true. But uh, even if it were true, I have not watched it, and I think we have, uh, 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 we have to have respect for uh, the, the lives of the people who have put their lives on the line uh, and have uh, paid the supreme price uh, in protecting us, uh, not to 
treat with levity and uh, the, the tragedy that has uh, befallen them. Um, but it's not something that, I, 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 that is why in my time to look at and uh, uh, comment on. Mm -hmm. other than the fact that uh, it's a tragedy, uh, uh, but out of respect for, for, uh, for the fallen heroes and also the fact that uh, there are things that when such incidences occur, it, it's not uh, uh, the debate that you have of them uh, in public that helps matters because there are things that you don't know, pictures uh, and uh, images could be banded about anyhow. And, uh, these are times for uh, fake news and... Uh, oh, no, it's not pictures and images. It's the, soldiers, the um, it's the soldiers' perception mm. that they are under attack. Yeah. Left to fend for themselves. It, you, you know, it, it's... it's it, it, it's, it's not easy verifying that. I, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that uh, A, I have not paid attention to it, and B, I don't think I should... Uh, 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 spend my time uh, worrying about uh, a matter that I think is best dealt with by those who are uh, professionals and then also dealing with it in a manner that helps the situation not just inflame uh, uh, emotions and, and fashions. All right. Um, so, Professor, going back to some of the conversations we had earlier, if you look at the current preparation as we go towards 2019, you look at some of the recommendations that were made during the 2014 um, CONFAB. How much power do you still believe is too much in the federal and how much, as whoever the next government is, needs to truly work on devolving power from the center into to a state level, as we've said, so that we actually have a true federalism, as we've been saying, we practice? Yeah, but my, my view is the, uh, the devolution of power by way of uh, transferring some legislative lists uh, uh, which are on the concurrent list, which is a concurrent list is the one that the Federal uh, National Assembly has the authority to legislate, state authorities have authority also to legislate on. It doesn't solve the problem uh, because uh, if you transfer some of those lists to the concurrent list, it still leaves the, the overriding authority uh, to the federal legislature, because if they legislate, they will override whatever the states have legislated. Now, the, the problem with our uh, federal system is that we, 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 we had three or four regions. We have uh, dismembered them and uh, multiplied the... the, the uh, the units of the federation, and we have uh, uh, weakened uh, the units making up the federation. Uh, so it is, it is for the people and Nigerians. And, and you know, it, you will find difficult, uh, uh, you will find it hard to convince people that they don't want to go uh, the state of many route, uh, states. Uh, the, national, the, the national conference that we, 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 we participated in in 2014 uh, suddenly woke up to create even more states than were in existence, 18 more states. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the point I was trying to make is devolving powers uh, in the manner that has been proposed does not strengthen uh, the units. So long as you are uh, subdividing them, you are weakening them, and you are making uh, the center by that action alone uh, stronger. Now, um, I know there are some who would say, well, go back to 1963. Uh, uh, now, what do you go back to 1963? Uh, uh, is it uh, you now become uh, a federation of four regions? I'm sure many would take up arms uh, uh, yes. against them, uh, against that exercise, yeah. Mm. yeah. But, um, Professor, funny enough, some people on this show have suggested going back to four regions, yeah. and um, ha we've had that debate on this show as yeah. well. 
Um, so, I, I mean, I think that I think yeah. that one thing that is coming clear, though, is that people are feeling that there is too much power in the center and devolving that and making um, states more equipped and also more in charge of their destiny, especially when it comes to the issue of security. I think that's been one of the big issues that people continue yeah. to talk about, about devolving of power. Yeah, I, I, I agree, but I think the... Uh, if you probe the, the, the assertion that going back to uh, uh, four regions will make the regions stronger, I, I looked at the, uh, the legislative list uh, in 1963, mm -hmm. and I looked at the legislative list also in uh, uh, 1999 constitution. There are quite a few things that were, uh, uh, of course, in 1963, we had uh, 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 federal uh, exclusive, uh, and then we had what was known as the residual list. Uh, uh, but even those alone do not make uh, the unit stronger. I, I followed the discussion uh, that you had yesterday of the elder statesman, uh, Adibanjo, mm -hmm. and uh, who who is of the view that the best thing that will happen to this country is uh, to restructure and uh, go back to 63. And uh, I, I, I think we, we don't ask questions of those uh, uh, assertions. That's why the, 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 the states that we have now, weakened as they are as units, are not making the, the most use of the powers uh, that they have under the Constitution for the benefit of the system. It's not that they lack the power, but they are not making uh, a positive, useful uh, use of the, the power that they have for the betterment of the people. Mm. So it's not for lack of power, if I may say so. Mm. Professor, since we have you here and we want to talk about sort of the road to 2019, and of course to do that we have to be we have to be reflective in the way we look at the current administration as uh, and and um, sort of start to put put some numbers and um, look at their performance. If you look at the performance of this government when it comes to economically and how the country has feared, how would you say this government has done economically? Hmm. I, I hate to display my ignorance. I'm not an economist, but I, I, I think the the, uh, the 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 level of sanity that has been brought in the way we do things, the way we spend, mm. the, uh, and we, uh, uh, we we spend within our means, mm. it's something commendable that you can build on. The the it has to be said that uh, the government. Now, and I mean by the government, I mean the th especially the two arms of government have not done a good job with uh, budgeting. Budgeting in the sense on a timely uh, appropriation and also a timely uh, disbursement of funds for uh, action to take place. Now, it's, it's a blame that can be uh, laid at the door of uh, the National Assembly for not uh, uh, for spending a whole lot of time before they uh, they pass the, the the budget, and also for the government not uh, 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 being uh, uh, proactive or maybe being very timely in the, in the disbursement of uh, the funds that have been appropriated. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, other than that, I uh, as I said, as uh, as a law lecturer, I I I, I lack that uh, expertise to speak about the. The economy, I, I, if I may, if you may permit me to, to say so. Prof, Prof, we're not going to let you off that easy because at the end of the day, if you look at some of the major indices yeah. that have come yeah. through, there are more Nigerians living in poverty today. There are more children out of school today. If you look at our health system, so when you look at how people have feared economically, we've uh, what I mean that would be more of some of the things we would like you to say. How, do you think that this government has been? Proactive in lifting people out of poverty, um, even though we've seen more people go into poverty in, under this administration. Uh, as I said, if you would uh, uh, indulge me, I, I, I'm not uh, uh, equipped to, to speak about the, the data and, and really what, 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 whether there are more people 
out of school now than there were uh, five years ago, I, I, I really don't know. Mm. But as a professor of law, oh, there would are you... more people poor, poorer today. Mm. But would you be willing to comment on the ASU strike in the third week? From your perspective, what would be a lasting solution to this yeah. crisis? To what? Please, so, sorry? The, the ASU, ASU strike. strike. Oh, the ASU strike. Well, I'm a member of ASU, and I think, uh, uh, I, I think my view about the ASU strike is that it, it, it has been uh, a, a path that has been followed, which was, uh, has proven to be a wrong path to take. Uh, it cannot be that uh, every two years uh, you down tools, you uh, uh, force government often uh, the, with the gun to their head uh, to commit to certain things uh, that uh, they know they cannot deliver and you also know that they can deliver on and then hope that things would, 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 would change. Now, also using the strike as an option uh, itself is counterproductive because you, you, it, it brings d disrepute to our academic system. Our calendar has, uh, has lost any meaning. Uh, we, 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 we stop teaching. Uh, we, we, we send students home. Uh, it, I think, is a path that is wrongly followed, that we ought to be more creative in attending to the problems uh, uh, that beset uh, higher education in, in this country, other than always resorting to, to strike action that are indefinite, that uh, uh, only end up uh, uh, further eroding the confidence that uh, uh, the public, especially the world, would have in our educational system. But That's my are, honest view. What are some uh, of these Of course, the government solutions? itself. It's the government itself. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, 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 I, I think the government itself uh, uh, makes promises. Uh, it does not deliver. The, 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 there ought to be a greater funding of public education uh, from the governments. If you establish an institution, you must fund it. Now, there also ought to be community ownership and participation in the uh, provision of higher education. When I say community participation and funding, I do not necessarily mean uh, uh, individuals being taxed. The, 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 it, it, there was in the past a system of a bursary system, scholarships that you can resort to to really provide more funding to, to, to schools if uh, uh, the issue is uh, a part of funding. So part of the creative way of dealing with this would be really for communities to own and be part of the, the management and funding of public uh, schools uh, at higher education level. Mm. Um, Prof, I mean, and just sort of once again, taking a look at this administration and looking at some of their um, performances, one of the key criticism about this administration is its lack of respect for court orders. As someone who is committed to our legal system, what do you say about that criticism and what do you say about the lack of respect of court orders of this administration? Uh, I cannot speak for the administration, but I think uh, there is uh, uh, an assertion that uh, the administration does not obey court orders. But the administration itself has explained uh, what they have done in respect of a particular court orders you are referring to them. Um, I, I think it is not a pervasive thing to say that the administration does not uh, obey court orders. Uh, that's not my reading of the situation. You may have particular cases, and those particular cases, I think the government also has an explanation for what, why they are doing what they are doing. So it's not, in my view, a pervasive uh, 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 
lawlessness on the part of government in disobeying court orders. Mm. That's not my reading of the, uh, the scene. Mm. That is definitely the assertion, and that is actually one of the biggest um, concerns that people have had about this Locally administration. Locally and internationally. Yes. But, Prof, I'd like your views. I don't know about uh, uh, international. I don't know about yeah. locally. No, mm -hmm. I don't know about locally, about international. I, I mean, if you, if you have uh, cases, particular cases, say them. And I think I, like I said, I'm not speaking for the government, but my reading of what is happening is that, in my view, in my considered view, you cannot say that there is a pervasive lawlessness on the part of government in disobeying court orders. Now, uh, give me 10, five cases of uh, a situation where the government has disobeyed court order. Uh, uh, and I, I, I will say that they themselves locally, have... Locally, there's been have, a lot of um, criticism regarding... To that. Okay. Locally, there's been criticism regarding the Shiite El Zazaki continued detention after he was and his wife, they were awarded bail, and they're still in detention. That's, the government has come under a lot of criticism for that. Yeah. And, and the government has it's its own reason why they say they are keeping him. The, the government has its own reason why, in the overall national interest, national security, that's what they said. And uh, I'm not in a position to dispute that. So mm. why does the rule of law fit vis-a-vis I mean, uh, -vis uh, national interest? If a court mm -hmm. has ruled on a particular matter, can the executive override that, considering that we have the separation of powers? Uh, it's not the government overriding a court order. The, the, the freedoms that have been extended to us as mm -hmm. citizens are not unqualified and are not uh, 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 given in a manner that they are absolute. They are subject to certain considerations, and if you read the Constitution, you will understand what I mean by that. I have read the Constitution, sir. But the Constitution has been interpreted, yeah. and the judge has ruled El Zagzaki and his <laughs> wife should be freed um, on bail. Dasuki granted bail, still in detention. Your comments, Prof? And my comment, as I said, is that the government says that they are keeping them uh, in the interest of national security, and uh, uh, it's not something that uh, uh, is available to me to assess to say whether what they say is right or wrong. Okay, Professor, um, we would we can continue that's on my this. View. Okay, yeah. we can continue on this path, but we wanted yeah. to um, we want to ask you a couple of yeah. other questions before before you leave. Um, mm -hmm. The the Abacha loot that has been returned. We wanted to get your opinion on that and also on some of the plans around the, the spending of the Abacha loot. What, what do you think and what are your opinion, what's your opinion of that? As someone... What's my opinion about the Abacha loot? Mm -hmm. That has been returned. And the way and, it's been dispersed. And the way it's been dispersed. Well, the government, in its wisdom, uh, has decided uh, that uh, they will use it to, for public good. And I, I think you cannot fault that. You cannot fault the decision that the government has said that uh, uh, the loot that had been returned to them, they will put it to public uh, use. Considering your position, it's, it's wrong to do that. Yeah. Considering your position in that administration, how do you feel about and what is mm -hmm. the what? How do you feel about the loot in general and even now the return of that loot? As someone that was part of that, I mean, that served in that administration, do you do you feel a sense of what? What is the sense that you feel? No, I don't feel any offense. I uh, I, I did not loot any money, and, and therefore I'm not being made to return any money. And uh, I'm not the only one who has served uh, that administration. And uh, I think if you have uh, questions to ask of uh, those who have served uh, and what they feel, uh, I don't feel anything, a sense of wrong done on my own part for whatever has happened under that administration. I don't, because I did no wrong, and I don't think uh, I should... Uh, feel any sense of remorse uh, for, for participating or for, for being a professional legal advisor to uh, the administration, to the, to the head of state. Mm. What are the issues that would most likely determine the outcome of next year's election? 
sorry, what, what were the issues that will come? Uh, that will most likely determine the outcome of next year's elections. What do you believe are the issues? Um, I envisage that, yeah, the issues would be, um, I think there will be an election that uh, hopefully the card reader would be very decisive in uh, 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 directing uh, the, the outcome as to the votes being counted. Uh, and that there will, in my uh, uh, assessment, uh, will be less uh, acrimony uh, about the outcome. But of course, uh, we, we, the, the, we, we, Nigerians uh, and politicians have a way of responding to an outcome of an election. They are unwilling to concede, and uh, the, 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 there will be uh, uh, litigations, uh, as is always the case. Not necessarily uh, um, at the national level. I don't envisage uh, 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 a contentious uh, legal dispute in relation to the national election, uh, but there would be very many contentious election uh, uh, litigation pertaining to, uh, especially as we are seeing now, uh, the pre-election uh, issues uh, uh, as they pertain to the primaries conducted. There will be a lot of those cases being carried on to the after election, and um, I hope. Uh, uh, it will be peaceful and there will be uh, um, uh, peace will reign after uh, the conduct of election. That's mm. what I, I, I envisage. Do you see security being an issue? <sighs> well, again, I, I have to give this caveat. Um, the, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I think the, 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 the security situation across the nation is not any worse uh, or will not be any worse in uh, February, March, when the election would take place than it was in 2015. And I, I don't think it should be an issue that will uh, undermine the credibility of the process. I, 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 given my knowledge of the security issues involved, uh, mm. I, I, may, I may have gotten it wrong. Do you believe INEC is prepared? Uh, well, by, uh, like I said, uh, going by what one has seen of their performance in the, some of the runoff elections, I don't think they have, uh, uh, they have done badly. Uh, they, uh, of course, the, their metal will be tested when they conduct uh, an election uh, nationwide. Um, uh, I, I have reason to believe that there are men and women on the uh, commission that should build on the gains of uh, 2015. And we sh we, I, I, I look forward to an election, national election being conducted that is, uh, I hope, uh, a notch better than the uh, 2015 election, based on what I know of the uh, members of the commission and also some of the improvements that have been brought about to the, uh, to the, the electoral act and to the, uh, uh, to the Constitution. Of course, they have not yet been um, uh, passed, uh, but I think if uh, the President uh, assents to some of the amendments that the National Assembly has done, uh, it should make for a more orderly uh, and more expeditious way of disposing of election petitions uh, and also for, for, for making the votes cast count, particularly uh, uh, making it uh, empathic that the, uh, uh, the electronic means of verifying voters, which is what uh, 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 the card reader is all about, if it is used, then uh, the, 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 the only people who are bona fide uh, voters would participate in the vote, and that only votes validly cast would be counted, and only those would determine who the winner uh, is out of the election. Mm -hmm. I, I, based on all those assessments, I, I look forward to uh, hopefully having uh, an election that is a notch better than the 2015, hopefully. Thank you so much, Professor. It's been great having you on the show today. We look forward to having you back. Thank you, Professor.
We now take a short break. When we come back, public health experts Ada Asomonike will be joining us to talk about depression and the several ways it wreaks havoc on the health of those who fail to adapt their lifestyles to the basic do's and don'ts of healthy living. Stay with us.